Hey, Haley. Hey, Tasha. Let's get this all. All right, let's fucking do this. So we finally hit double digits. Whoop, whoop. On Asylum. Yeah. It's a good one. Yeah. It's a good one to be a double digit midget with. What? Double digit midget. Oh. You ever heard that term? I have not. You know, never? Never, ever. Never, not once? Never, not once. Never, not once. That's unfortunate. Not my midget, not my problem. (laughs) (laughs) All right. That's what I always say. (laughs) Well, we are in... Rockford, Illinois. Is it Illinois or Illinois? It's Illinois. Illinois. The S is silent. All right. Uh, at Roosevelt Asylum. Yep. And there's obviously a ton of like keep out signs. No and... trespassing. It's like your typical what you think of when you think of a creepy abandoned asylum. Yeah. That's I mean we're fucking crazy people where you don't go to there. Yeah. You stay far away from there. You don't point your finger and you don't go to where your finger is pointing. No. No. You, it, there, but there's like graffiti on the walls and the broken bottles and the peeling paint yeah, and the can, chained doors. You can doors tell somewhere and, that like kids go to fucking party when they're not supposed to go to party. Yeah. And you see someone use bolt cutters. They cut open a door and they go run inside. And then you see cops outside. Yeah. They're, I mean, obviously the cops got called because someone is trespassing because there's no trespassing signs all over the fucking place. My question is, who the fuck is close enough to this place? I thought the same thing. I thought the same thing. There's no, you never see another house on the block. There's nothing across the street. Like, this isn't like Boise, Idaho, where Intermountain is the insane asylum, and then there's apartments across the street. Yeah, no, it's, nope, not like that. I don't want to live there either. No. Can you imagine if I've been in Intermountain? Well, can you, like, weird. There was a girl in there when I was in there. Who had had surgery on her stomach and then, like, tried to kill herself by stabbing herself through the incision in her stomach. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love for that person to break out and try and she get into my 12. house. She was 12. Oh, that poor girl. Yeah. Yeah. Me and her got in a fight, too, because she stole my hairbands. Bitch. I was coming down, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was coming down off drugs. My mom thought that other things were wrong, but I was coming down off drugs. And so she put me in her mountain because I, I was crazy. Safe place. Needed somewhere safe to... To detox. Mm-hmm. Fun times. Anyways. <laughs> so, <laughs> enough about us. Tell us about you. So we see these two cops go in and try and find the kids that have trespassed. The youths. Yeah, youths. Youths. And they fucking split up. Yeah, you don't split up. I don't what know we how say many times you have to say this. Every time, you do don't, not. Don't fucking split up. And of course, like, the older cop, like, takes the upstairs and the younger cop goes downstairs into the boiler room. Well, and we also, um, before they split up, we figure out why it was such an issue for them to have people trespassing in this asylum because um, the local legend, this the older cop is, like, from the area, and he knows yeah. the legend of the place, and it's, like... Um, the place is haunted with the ghosts of the patients, um, if you spend the night, uh, the spirits will drive you insane. Yeah. And so he's telling this to the younger cop, Walt Kelly, because he's not from around there and he didn't know that legend. Um, but they split up. Kelly goes in the basement. The older guy goes upstairs. And he's the, the older cop is the one that finds the three teenagers, the yeah. three youths that yeah. broke in. Yeah. He's like, come on, you crazy kids. <laughs> you meddling kids. You, you little whippersnappers, you. Yeah, so the Kelly, the guy who's downstairs, uh, his flashlight goes out. Get the salt. And, yeah, get the fucking salt, guys. Mm-hmm. Carry salt with you in dark, scary, creepy places. Yeah. It's just smart. Yep. Uh, and a door opens, and then he comes back out. Like, everything's, the, the, they send the kids on their way, and the cops meet back up. But you can tell that there's something off with yeah. Officer Kelly. He, yeah. And his nose starts to bleed when he gets into the cop car. When I first saw this episode, though, I thought it might have been something like um, ectoplasm or something. That's what I thought, too, until but I realized that Sam's nose is bleeding, too. It's blood. It's not, yeah. yeah. Um, it would have been cooler. 
If it was ectoplasm? Would have been cooler if it was ectoplasm. Would have been cooler if you did. <laughs> but so after shift, they go home, and Kelly, like, walks into his bedroom, and his wife is in bed, and she's like, oh, you're still not going to talk to me? I apologized, and blah, blah, blah. And How many times do I need to say that I'm sorry? He doesn't say a word. He no. says not one fucking thing, but he takes his gun and he shoots her and then he shoots himself. Yeah, murder suicide. Yep, and you don't see this the murder suicide happen. You just see the the flashes from the gunshots from outside the home and you just assume. Yeah, it, there's two shots. I mean, yeah. Where else is it going to go except for right. maybe two to her? Yeah. But, so it cuts to Sam and Dean and they still can't find their dad. Sam, of course, is calling all the friends and everything. All Nobody's, the hun- yeah, they're like all hunters, priests, uh huh, everybody to see if they knew where. And they can't find him. And Sam's like, "I want to go to the feds." And <laughs> Dean's like, "Dad would be pissed." That's a bad idea. Well, and as much as Dean or Sam is looking through, like trying to call people that they know, mm-hmm. Dean is looking through the journal to see if there's any sort of clues that he can find in there, and he's like... I love the guy, but I swear, he writes like friggin' Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, and then Sam also is like, well, Dad could be dead. And Dean's like, don't say that. Yeah. Because it's anything that has to do with John being dead, like, instantly pisses Dean off. Well, yeah. He gets a text message, like, right after this whole thing. Gets a text message. It sounds like his phone is ringing, but it it's does. a text message. Well, when they were talking about putting the feds on him, Sam honestly really doesn't even care if Dad is pissed that they put the feds on him. No. Like, he, he, he just, just wants, wants to, to find, find him. him. And especially given everything that happened in Kansas, he wants to find him even more now to try and figure out what the hell they just went through in Kansas. Yeah, because if Dad was alive, he you said it yourself, he would be there. Right. So, they're, you know, we're getting mixed signals. Dean want, doesn't want to find him. He just wants to follow the orders. Yeah. And Sam like wants to soldier. find him. Yeah. And Sam wants to find him because he wants answers. So, when this text message goes off, it's from an unknown number, and it, it just has coordinates. Mm-hmm. And Dean is instantly like, oh, it's Dad. He's sending us... To go do a job. Like, See, Dad's not dead. Yeah. <laughs> he's not. He's fine. Yeah. Everything's fine. They figure out where the coordinate the coordinates lead them, and it's to Rockford, Illinois. And so Dean flips through the journal, and he finds a page about the asylum from previous years. Dean says that Dad had it earmarked in right. the journal. Yeah. It says in the journal there's... Seven unconfirmed sightings, two deaths, till last week at least. I think this is where he wants us to go. In the on the um, news clipping, yeah. In in the in the journal, yeah, yeah. Well, then, so they figure out where the coordinates are, and they figure out why they're supposed to be going there. And Dean, like a good soldier, just says, "Okay, let's go." Yeah, like no questions asked. That's where we're headed. And of course, Sam always has reservations, but mm-hmm. we put up with it. That's Sam being a wham baby. So they go to Rockford, Illinois, and they find. Daniel Gunderson, and that was the older cop. The older cop, right? Walt's, Walt Kelly's partner. Partner. Yep. And they find him in a bar. Yeah, and Dean pretends to be Nigel Tufnell with the Chicago Tribune. The fuck kind of name is that, Nigel? He doesn't even look like a Nigel. My name's Nigel. It reminds me of um the the wild thornberries. The wild thornberries. <laughs> yes, <laughs> with his great big nose. <laughs> Yes. And his his mustache actually comes out of his nose. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But he's pretending to be this Nigel person and is From badgering sh- him basically for information. Just tell me what just tell me I want to know like what happened that night and so Sam comes up and he's like can't you see this man's an officer? Just leave him alone and yeah. like shoves him out of the way. Hard. And it's <laughs> like an ob- hard. it's an obvious setup. Like because oh, yeah. Sam wins the trust of Officer Gunderson and buys him a beer and then he tells him the whole story. Oh yeah. And uh Sam finds out that Walter Kelly was a good cop. Uh his wife him and his wife had a few fights, but they were Talking about having kids. Yeah, it wasn't anything that was like, you wouldn't think that he would just go home and kill his wife. No. It was a normal, like, everybody's everybody fine. Yeah. But he did have a lot to say about the asylum. Mm-hmm. So they make their way over to the um, asylum, and they, because Gunderson had told Sam that they found the kids in the South Wing. 
So when they look through the journal, they found the article had said that in 1972, three kids broke into the South Wing. Only one survived. The way he tells it, one of his friends went nuts and started lighting up the place. So somebody just went nuts while they were inside the South Wing and shot everybody. And so they're thinking that the South Wing seems to be the heart of whatever's everything. happening. And they noticed that the doors were supposed to be chained, but somebody had recently cut off the chains with bolt cutters. Yeah. And, and they thought that it was possibly chained to keep something in. Or to keep people out like they weren't sure which one yeah but it was to do either either, either or, or or both probably would have helped yeah <laughs> but we get <laughs> teeth says oh my god let me know if, if you see any dead people Haley joel i know like, i died well he's kind of getting like this chandler bean being moment where he's like masking all of his uncomfortable uncomfortableness with um uh, humor mm -hmm. because he is so uncomfortable like if you remember how much he freaked out in in the episode previous too when he found out what's going on with sam and his dreams that he has the shining yeah he just kind of lost his shit for a minute but now he's kind of masking it with the humor yeah and he's i love it when he's like he goes who do you think is a hotter psychic patricia arquette jennifer love hewitt or you, or you. <laughs> <laughs> which makes sense because patricia arquette was the the gal that played the psychic and medium mm -hmm. and that ran from 05 to 11 and jennifer love hewitt was in ghost whisper from 05 to 2010 and this episode aired in 2005, so it kind of just all wrapped Plays up in, in a nice little, nice little bow. Yeah, they of just... course Sam is like, I just have strange vibes sometimes, some weird dreams. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm not a, I'm not a psychic. <laughs> but the EMF reader isn't picking anything up while they're there, and they they kind of say, well, some spirits don't come out at certain hours. The Only freaks the, come out at night. The freaks come out at night. I love that. I wrote that in my notes too. Oh, also, why the fuck is there a headless doll? <laughs> what is that? I don't know, but it's... It's like a baby doll with its just head popped off. Popped right off. It's a decap... I put in here, it's a decapitated doll. I'm glad we both talked about and, it. And things like in formaldehyde in jars. Yeah. Like, just random Still shit. Still there. I don't know what was going on. But, obviously, they find evidence of electroshock therapy and lobotomies. So, yeah, there's like something the, weird happening. The chair with the arm straps and mm -hmm. everything. So they're thinking that ghosts are maybe possessing people or they're driving them insane like in the Amityville or in The Shining. The Shining. No, or, The Shining is where they're – well, yeah, like Jack in uh -huh. The Shining. Yeah. But they, Sam mentions um, Amityville Horror and the Smurl Haunting, which – Everyone should know the Amityville horror story at this point, but um, if there's you like, don't, there's like nine fucking movies about it. There's a lot, but if you don't know what like the Amityville is, it was um, this family had moved into a house in Amityville, in um, and on November thirteenth, nineteen seventy four, there was a mass murder in the home where the twenty three year old man murdered his entire family with a fucking shotgun while they were sleeping. And that included his parents and all four of his siblings. Yeah. And then 13 months later, the Luntz family moved in, or Luntz or Lutz or something. Lutz. Lutz. And they bought the house at, like, this super crazy reduced price and um, because of the murders. But they only lasted in the house for 28 days and ended up leaving because of the paranormal activity. Yeah. So that's kind of the rundown on the Amityville story. But the Smurl haunting, I had never heard. But apparently, um, the Smurl family lived in a home in Pennsylvania, and they said it was inhabited by a demon. But they lived there from 1974 to 1989, which is a really long damn time to live with a fucking demon. Maybe they couldn't afford to buy a new house. But I, I would have fucking stayed with family. Demon's going to demon. Ugh, demon's going to demon for a long time. <laughs> but I believe that Ed and Lorraine Warren investigated that house, too. But I'd have to do more research to see, like, what their findings were if, if, if they did that. But when every time I looked up the Smurl haunting, and Lorraine Warren came up, too. So I'm yeah. guessing they went in and investigated that house. Um, but anyways, that was just my little, like, one-off um, when they talk about something that I had never heard of. I tried to do a fact check on it, but the Smurl haunting yeah. was a real thing. I do like that they kind of bring stuff up like that, too. Stuff that actually happened. Just kind of tie it into yeah. our world, too. It makes it feel more real. It does. But anyways, back to Sam and Dean. Um, Sam, he wants to start looking for John again while they're in this room looking around with the different, yeah. like, investigative purposes in this room. And 
they kind of have this back and forth about um, – Sam wants to talk about the fact that John's not there in that town like yeah. they thought that he would be. And at this point, Dean's just like, we're he, just following orders. Dean's very militant in yes. the way that he follows uh, John's orders. And I think that has to do with how John was in the military. And I, that's how he – He raised them. That's how he raised his kids yeah. to be more like soldiers than they – than they were kids well it's just like this blind following like i say jump you say okay like there's no question as to why do i need to jump and that's what sam is doing because you're telling me to yeah and that's what sam is doing is he's questioning everything that he's being told i feel like that's a good thing to do though i do too i don't think there's anything wrong with it i just i feel like sam wins this fight on this part like i i don't it kind of makes me uncomfortable on how on how straightforward dean is just willing to follow his dad into the night like it's mm-hmm. it's disconcerting to me it's unhealthy yeah it's very unhealthy and if somebody were to treat me like that and the way that dean treats his dad like was just that up on a pedestal bow down to everything that yeah. i said like it's weird it's not okay like mm-hmm. give me a little bit of fight mm-hmm. while they're kind of D- i think dean kind of is just turning his back on him just because he wants the conversation to end but he finds, like, this door plaque that says San- Sanford Ellicott. And so they decide at that point, well, we need to find out more about what happened in the South Wing and who this Sanford Ellicott guy well, is. It says under it, Chief of Staff. Yeah. Well, he's so got something to do with all of our shit. Mm-hmm. So Sam makes an appointment with James Ellicott, mm-hmm. who we find out is um, Sanford's son. Yes. But he, Sam keeps trying to get info on dude's dad, and, like, he's, like, not having it. He's like, Sam, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about you. I know. He's like, I'm just a local history buff. I just want to know all the things. <laughs> tell me more. Tell me more. Yeah, and he's like, how about this? If you tell me the truth about how you feel about your brother, I will tell you about what happened at the asylum. And there was, there was a huge riot. Yeah, they call it the Roosevelt Riots. Is that what yeah, they call it? I think so. Yeah, I believe that's what they what they call them. Like that's what the the town knows what happened. Yeah. by is like the Roosevelt riots. He's in the hospital for quite some time talking about how he feels about his brother apparently yeah. because Dean is waiting very impatiently by the time he comes out. He gets what he wanted after he talked about whatever it is that he talked about with the doctor because we don't ever see that part of the conversation, but when he comes out of the hospital, he tells Dean about how the South he tells him about the South Wing. Yeah, and one night in 64, they rioted, attacked staff, attacked each other. So what, the patients took over the asylum? Apparently. Any deaths? Some patients, some staff. I guess it was pretty gory. Some of the bodies were never even recovered, including our chief of staff, Ellicott. But what do you mean never recovered? Cops got every inch of the place, but I guess the patients must have stuffed the bodies somewhere hidden. Well, that's grim. And my question is, What the fuck did the staff do for the patients to riot? Like, there's... Patients don't just riot to riot, even in psych wards. Like, there has to be some sort of unjust treatment for more than one person to act out so severely. Well, I'm sure there was, because in in the 60s, the 50s and 60s, like, asylums were used for... A lot of different shit. A lot shit. of stuff. Like, even... Women were still being treated for hysteria. Yeah. And, I mean, there was some nasty shit. So, if, if I mean, I would probably be locked up for hysteria when I was back then because... <laughs> because let's fucking face it. But I would have fucking rioted, too. Yeah. With the way that they were being treated? Yeah. Yeah. So, and they also say that the cops scour the place, but the patients must have stuffed the bodies somewhere hidden. Yeah, so there's a lot of potential for um, trapped spirits and angry ghosts. Yeah, and they, so once this riot happened, though, they transferred all the surviving patients and they closed the place down, mm-hmm. completely closed it down. Like, fuck this, we're done here. Yeah, so that place has been abandoned since 1964, so we can only imagine how long these hauntings have been happening and just massive, crazy shit going on. Yeah. But we go back to the asylum after we get all of this information from Sam that he had gotten from James Ellicott. And there's two teens fucking around in the asylum again. And the, this poor girl, she just wanted to go to a movie. Yeah. And her douchebag boyfriend drug her to this building 
and is like, it's going to be fun. It's like a scary movie in real life. Yeah. And he's just like, she is clearly not having a good fucking time. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, but if I go at one, I would not go. But two, if I'm taking someone into somewhere where they're clearly uncomfortable, I would leave. Like yeah. my mom instincts get take like kick in and I'm like, oh, you don't. You don't want to be here? Okay, let's okay, go. We can go somewhere we else. Go oh, somewhere. no. He's a fucking dick about it. And he's like, come on. It'll be fun. And, like, she is clearly not wanting to fucking be there. She's not having a good time. And he just, like, walks away from her. He leaves her. He's yeah. like, well, I'm going to go check shit out. You can stay here if you want to. And he leaves her. Yeah. God, he's such an ass. <laughs> we are totally breaking up. <laughs> done here. He wants to keep looking around. And she's just not having it. No. So, he does leave her behind in the hallway, mm-hmm. and he goes to go look around, and he's a fucking dumbass. Like, I don't know how many times we have to say it. Don't split up. Stop splitting up. Stop splitting up. You wouldn't fucking die if you stop, stop doing that. Stop it. And his flashlight flickers, and of course, he doesn't have any fucking salt with him. No. And he, you see a, a, a shadow. Yeah, his flashlight like flickers and then turn like turns off. It goes out all yeah. the way completely and doesn't come back on. And you see like this figure standing behind him, and mm-hmm. it looks like a girl, which it's who he came with. Fine. And he turns around. and He's like, "Oh, hey, sweetie, couldn't stand being alone for too long, huh?" And she like she just silently this this person silently walks up to him and starts kissing him, like and then super you, hardcore kissing him. Yeah, and his. His girlfriend calls from the other room, and he's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. She's like, Gavin, where are you from off screen? And he's like, blue. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, it serves him fucking right, though. Right? Like, you're going to leave your fucking dickhole? Jesus. Yeah, you should be fucking making out with a ghost at that point. But her face is all, like, smashed in and shit. And messed up. Yeah, and super messed like up. it's messed up. Yeah. So Sam and Dean enter the asylum at this point <laughs> shortly after that yeah and they have the emf reader again and they're looking through a camera and sam's like man it's orbing like crazy mm-hmm. and so if people don't know what orbs are do you want to tell them what they are or do you want me to tell them i'll let you do it okay so orbs basically are just like manifestations of spirit that float around in like balls mm-hmm. that's basically what they look like. it looks like a ball of mist or a ball of light and typically you can only see them when you have, like, a video camcorder. Yeah. And so he's looking through the camcorder and he sees all these orbs. Yeah. But And then uh, you see some spirit walk behind Sam and Dean in a straitjacket. Mm-hmm. And then it zooms in on his face. And this spirit looks like he's in pain. Oh, yeah. Like, just, he doesn't even look super crazy. He just looks hurt. Mm-hmm. Well, most of them do. Most of, because we see quite a few spirits in this one. But most of them, they... Seem just lost and scared and sad yeah. and hurt. Well, and they keep trying to talk to them. Mm-hmm. They're not, like, as we find out throughout this episode, they're not trying to hurt anyone. Well, yeah. they they Nobody knows this yet, that they're just trying to reach out for help instead of, like, trying to hurt. Yeah. And and Dean even says at one point, he's like, Well, the only thing that makes me more nervous than a pissed off spirit is a pissed off spirit of a psycho killer. Yeah. But just because they're in an asylum at this point, like those years that they had all these like crazy people harbored in the asylum doesn't yeah. mean that they were crazy. They just might have like a woman might have stood up a little bit too, you know, too much mm-hmm. for herself or someone was too artistic or, or Down syndrome, Down syndrome or, or mentally disabled yeah. in some way or so, just too depressed. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, not necessarily something that you need to be in an asylum for, but it's just no. generalized society didn't want to deal with you. Right. They're looking around, and Sam comes across the spirit of the lady with the smashed face, and um, he's he's like freaking out and calling for Dean, and Dean comes around the corner and shoots her with a salt round. He hits her with the salt. Yeah, he shoots like her with the salt round. Hit it with the salt, <laughs> like a margarita, mm. like a margarita, or like a tomato. Hit it with the salt. Yeah, I, I don't like it. I don't like tomatoes. God, put it in my mouth. I love tomatoes. <laughs> So like juicy. almost instantly <laughs> after, <laughs> almost instantly after Dean shoots the spirit with the salt round, Sam's like, uh, kind of get the feeling that she wasn't trying to hurt me. Like yeah. instantly, like almost regret. <laughs> He's like, oh well, oh, um, sorry. I feel like maybe she was trying to tell me something. Like they just, he just, yeah, couldn't have fucking said that sooner, Sam. Thank yeah, right? you. <laughs> <laughs> and then they find Cat hiding behind a bed. Cat is the the chick from is the chick, the the girlfriend from earlier. Yeah, 
And she, yeah, she's totally, like, posted up behind a flipped over Josh, bed, terrified. Please leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> Ghosts go, fuck go away. Me. Yeah, she was like, uh, I came here with my boyfriend, Gavin. We were supposed to go to a movie, and um, I've seen some shit since I've been here, so <laughs> I'd like to get the fuck out now. I want to go home. <laughs> but she doesn't want to leave without her boyfriend, so they go to look for him. Yeah. <laughs> and they, what do they do? Split up. They split up. Stop doing that. Oh my god. Is, but they when are they gonna realize shit's not a good idea? I don't think it's they not have, a good idea. I think it takes them like fourteen seasons to figure this out. <laughs> no, because in season fifteen, what does Dean do? Send Sam out on his fucking own. Yeah. God. Yeah, they still haven't figured it out. Yeah, and Dean still has to write in and save the day on that episode too. Mm-hmm. Fuck. So Dean and Kat go on a little search for Gavin and Sam goes on his own and when Dean and Kat are wandering around <laughs> looking for for Gavin Dean's like you've seen horror movies right well yeah next time you watch one take their advice if they say it's haunted don't fucking go in there don't go in don't go in don't go in just FYI also um they don't cuss like we cuss in the show no <laughs> not except for in in ghost facers ghost facers oh yeah but they bleep it out <laughs> And they put like the little the, the little, little ghost face over, yeah. the, over their mouth so you can't tell what they're saying. <laughs> oh, ghost facers. I love ghost facers. We were watching um, Ghost Adventures the other night and I was like, ghost, ghost facers. <laughs> we husband, find the ghosts. My husband was not impressed. <laughs> I would have been. That was funny. I would have done it with I you. I was laughing. But as they're wandering around, Sam finds Gavin. And he's knocked the fuck out he's on the ground. He's knocked the fuck out on the ground because he was running away like a little bitch. And he, not, he probably tripped and fell or, not, like, hit something. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Dumbass. When he comes to, he was like, this ghost chick, uh, she kissed me and it scarred me for life. Like, And I, then she was I, trying to whisper something in my ear. And Sam's like, okay, well, what'd she say? And he's like, I don't know. I ran away. I was scared. <laughs> Dumbass. Dude. But honestly, same. Yes. But it's Same. fun to make fun of him because... It's fun to make fun of him because I'm not in that situation. I wouldn't fucking put myself there. Um, I would not have continued to walk into an asylum if my girlfriend was obviously uncomfortable. Yeah. I would have been like, okay, I would be the well. girlfriend. Honestly, I haunted places at night scare me. During the daytime, sure. Well, and when if When there's you know. sun out and it's okay and the, like, the world is one, cool. <laughs> but darkness falls, fuck you. I'm not going anywhere in it. I like to watch the scary shows at night. But I will not go to the scary places and the haunted places at night by myself well, or with anybody know, else. Well, if you know that you were going to go somewhere that's haunted, wouldn't you want to, like, arm yourself? Yeah. With, like, salt and iron and I shit? I would go to, like, Wendy's and pick up all their little salt packets. That they have and just... <laughs> <laughs> like, carried in my pockets and just... We were, I don't remember what we salt. were watching. I was watching something with the boys earlier. And they said something about... Oh, we were watching Gravity Falls, yeah. and the chick was like, "Yeah, I hit the he hit the ghost with a bat," and Jackson was like, "Well, that's stupid that they believed her because you know you can't hit a ghost with anything." And I'm like, "Iron and salt, <laughs> yes, you can." Oh my god, I'm gonna learn you today. You gonna learn today? Mm-hmm. Dean and Kat are walking down the hall after they're like they're still trying to find Gavin. I don't think they realize that um, Sam has found him. And his fucking flashlight yeah, flickers. Yeah, Dean's flashlight goes out. And the girl's like, Ow, you're hurting, hurting my arm. arm. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, Dean turns Not around. Dean, sweet cheeks. Dean turns around like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and when, they, when he, like, because he had gotten his lighter out and he, like, shined the light from the lighter down onto her arm. And there's this ghost hand yeah, holding onto her onto arm. Her. And it, like yanks her into one of the whips her around and yeah pulls her into a cell yanks her into the cell and then slams the door and locks her in with him and she's freaking out same yeah well yeah same valid yeah. and at first she doesn't see him but she hears him and then she's looking around like what is that what is that where is it coming from and then it shows him and sam of course finds him at this point with gavin mm-hmm. and sam's like Listen to him. You need to face him. To face, she's all. You face him, <laughs> dude. I'd be the same way. You do it. I don't want to do this. <laughs> no. And he's like, "This is the only way that you're going to get out of there. You just have to turn and face him." Yeah. Listen to what he has to say. Mm-hmm. So she fucking mans up. 
man. Yeah, she does. She kind of turns into a badass at this moment. Yeah. Yeah. And he leans in and whispers to her. Yep. And the door opens. And the door opens, and she comes out, and Gavin's like, oh my god, are you okay? Like, She's like, now Fuck you're you. fucking concerned? Fuck you, buddy. And all she says is 137. Yeah. That's all he said. That's what the ghost told me was 137, and Sam and Dean instantly are like, room number. Dean tells Sam to get the kids out. While he goes and finds room 137, mm-hmm. again, they split up. Stop doing that. Jesus fucking Christ. So, Kat's, like, trying to make small talk with Sam. So, how do you guys know about all this ghost stuff? It's kind of our job. Why would anyone want a job like that? I had a crappy guidance counselor. And Dean? He's your boss? <laughs> I don't know what you want me to say to that Honestly, lady. same, bud. I had a crappy guidance counselor, too. She told me I wasn't going to really amount to much. Look at me now, bitches. You showed her. I but think I turned out okay. I think you turned out fucking awesome. <laughs> so Dean finds room 137, and it's fucking trash. Well, and it's Dr. Ellicott's office. Yeah, it's not an actual, like, room room. It's, right. It's an office office yeah there's papers scattered fucking everywhere everywhere and he's digging through different drawers and like shifting through papers and stuff and and he finds a journal yeah he finds it like stuffed in a wall or something yeah it's like in a hidey hole yeah it's and it's not something that you can just like see Mm -hmm. he had he had to really find it it has all of the twisted shit and the experiments and all of the, the stuff that, like, the truly fucked up shit that Dr. Ellicott was doing to his patients. Yeah. And uh, he... Like, the experiments mm-hmm. and everything. He says, all work and no play makes Dr. Ellicott a very dull boy, which is a Shining reference. Another yes. one. This is, like, the third one in the two in two episodes. Yeah. He's looking through the journal and just kind of soaking it all in, and we get another scene cut. And it's Sam's trying to find the an exit, and he f- figures out all the doors are locked. Yeah, something's keeping him in there. Yeah, and the is it? I think it's the girl or the boy, Cat uh, or Gavin, and they're like, "What? The patients don't want us to get out?" And Sam's like, "No, something else." Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "Like a fucked doctor, <laughs> like that doctor that's a jackass, right?" So there's no way out. No. There's no way out. So, and in this in this moment, Sam also gets a phone call. And it's very fuzzy and very staticky. And yeah. and it's it's Dean, for all intents and purposes. Rabbit but, ears around Dean. Dean. Yeah, and he is like, I'm down in the basement, and I see him, and it's, he's coming towards me. It's, and he's trying to get me. Yeah, so he's trying to, like, whatever whatever is on the other end. Is And when he gets the phone call, it doesn't take a whole lot of detective work to figure out that it's not fucking Dean. Yeah, because obviously, like, it shows Dean in the show. He's not there. Yeah. He's in that room. And even just the way that the phone call sounds. Yeah. So he's like, do either of you know how to handle... Sam asked the kids, do either of you know how to handle a gun? And Gavin's like, no, why would I know how to do that? Like, all in yeah. his fucking and Kat's pussy. Like, I can. She's like, I got this. I got this. Yeah. And she's a fucking badass. Fucking dumb boy. Yes. Dumb boy. Yes. We know how to use shotguns. Mm-hmm. Hand it to me. Right? Give me the gun. Give me the gun. I know what I'm doing. Yep. At that point, then Sam, like, heads down to the basement because he thinks his brother is in trouble. Yeah. And he goes into the same room that has the biohazard sign on it as that Walt Kelly did. did. Yeah. And his flashlight goes out. And as his flashlight goes out, a door opens... To what looks like an operating room. Yeah. It's a fucking operating room. Yeah, it's yucky. It's real yucky. Yeah. It's just scary looking. Yeah, it's not inviting at all. No. Like, nothing about this place is inviting, but that place definitely has its own little terrifying factor. Yeah. If I found a room like that, like, I would Patrick Hines scream. Like... <laughs> I would Patrick Hines scream, and there would be a me-shaped fucking hole in the door out. Fuck you guys. Goodbye. Like, no. Yeah, but that is why they do the creepy and the weird, because they see rooms like that, and they're like, all right, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> and walk in. Let me pull my pants up. Yeah. Get my big board drawers on. Your big boar? <laughs> my, my big boy. 
words are hard today. I haven't even I haven't even had the alcohol. <laughs> Jesus. Well, um, we see. So Sam finds this creep ass fucking room, and Dean is nowhere to be found. Uh, yeah. When he thinks that he's going to find his brother down there being attacked by Doctor Ellicott, and his brother's nowhere to be found. And you see, like, the shiftiness of a spirit moving behind, yeah. like, the draped plastic and shit like that in that room that he found. And he, like, turns around, and it's fucking Dr. Ellicott. Yep, and he says, Don't be afraid. I'm going to make you all better. And he, like, he grabs his, him by the face. Yeah, puts his hands on either side of his face, and there's, like, electric... It looks like electric shock going through him, like electricity. Yeah, the electricity, like... He's got like, sparkle fingers. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just hands. I just um, watched Shazam last night, <laughs> Captain Sparkle Fingers. I haven't seen it. It's so funny. I have oh seen my Frozen God. 2, though, and that was pretty good. You should come over because we bought Shazam on Amazon Prime. Oh, did you? Oh, my God. It's so good. Lay your hands on my staff. Gross. No. <laughs> <laughs> and say my name. What? <laughs> <laughs> it looked funny when I saw the previews for it. It's so good. It's so good. Anyway. So, well, before that, Cat, Cat tells Gavin, like, they cut back up to upstairs, and she's like, if we make it out alive, we are so breaking up. I know, and I just wanted to, like, fist pump her. Yeah. So bad. Good for you, girl. At a girl. Know your worth. Yes. And she hears something and just shoots. Well, yeah. Well, she's scared. I heard a noise. I'm shooting at it. Yeah. Fuck yeah, but and it's she Dean. She almost shoots <laughs> Dean. And she's like, Sorry. <laughs> Props, girlfriend. But he's a little confused as to why they're still there. Yeah. And not gone. She's like, well, the doors are locked. The doors are locked and your brother went down to the basement because you called him. And he's like, the fuck I did. The basement, huh? Yeah. So Dean goes down there, obviously, to save Sam. Mm -hmm. And he finds him. And he's like, well, you know, Dr. Ellicott did experiments down here. and Well, Sam kind of sneaks up on him. And he's like, hey. Like, weird like weirdly i came down here to help you yeah just weirdly calm and weirdly like almost when the and when he starts when dean starts telling him about all the things that dr ellicott did down in the basement it's almost like he's defending him yeah it's fucking but weird. the patients are the ones who rioted and yeah he's like but they rioted because of their treatment dr feel good down there trying yeah. to make them like Dr. Feelgood was performing experiments on his patients for anger therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, he was making them angry in hopes of getting them out, like getting it out of their system. Right. But it was just making them it worse was making and worse. worse. And it was making them angrier and angrier until they fucking turned on him and rioted, which. Yeah. I mean, I would too. Don't blame you. Like, get me super full of rage and there's no off button. Like, yeah. You, you just see red. You turned it on and you're the one that turned it on. So guess what? I'm coming after you now, yeah. motherfucker. So Dean wants to find uh, Ellicott's body in salt and burn it. Mm-hmm. And he thinks that it's in his hidden procedure room somewhere in the basement. And Sam is like, dude, I looked everywhere. There's I can't no room. Find anything. There's no room. And he like almost doesn't want him to find it, doesn't want him to salt and burn the bones. Yeah. And Dean even asked him, did you see him while you were down here? And he's like, no. No. The f- nope. Didn't see anything. Red flag. That's not Sam. Yeah. So Dean finds the door and Sam's nose starts to bleed. And mm-hmm. this is when I first realized that it's blood, not it's ectoplasm. Blood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So Sam, of course, Sam. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. He goes on a villain's monologue. Sam? Yeah. Uh-huh. He goes on a villain's monologue about how he's tired of being told what to do and blah, blah, blah. And blah. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> Why? Like, and I just, I kept thinking about it because I watched Shazam last night. So, and one of the main characters talks about, this is the villain. He's the villain. And so that's where I think, oh my God, it's the, vi- it's the villain's mon- monologue. Yeah. I can't, I'm sorry. I can't hear you. You're like a mile away from me. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I'm just going to go. <laughs> well, yeah, he's, yeah, he totally goes and off to this dark, dark place in his mind because of dr feel good telling him yeah. i'm gonna make it all better for and he you don't worry dean with the rock salt yeah he's as dean is like finding where the this door is hidden because he feels the air coming from underneath the door yeah he bends down to kind of check it out and when sam's nose starts to bleed starts to bleed he like picks the gun up and points it right at dean and he's like hey dean 
And Dean turns around and he's like, what are you doing, dude? Yeah. And that's Sam goes on his villain's monologue. Villain monologue. I am normal. I'm just telling the truth for the first time. I mean, why are we even here? Because you're following dad's orders like a good little soldier? Because you always do what he says without question? Are you that desperate for his approval? This isn't you talking, Sam. That's the difference between you and me. I have a mind of my own. I'm not pathetic like you. So what are you going to do? Oh, you're going to kill me? You know what? I am sick of doing what you tell me to do. We're no closer to finding that today than we were six months ago. And then fucking shoots him. Yeah. And blasts. There's a Dean-shaped hole through that door as he goes sending, like, yeah, propel him backwards with the rock salt. Yep. So as Sam is, like, doing all of this, uh, Dean is like, all right, well, you know, if you want to kill me, here, here's a real gun. Here's my, here's my gun with real, real bullets. bullets. And Sam actually pulls the fucking trigger. Yeah, Sam pulls the trigger. And it, he, like, it doesn't register. He's like, why is this blank? Like, why is this not, why is he not dead? And Sam, Dean grabs the gun from him and knocks him out. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, oh, my God. Yeah, he totally would have killed his brother. He pulls the trigger twice. Yeah, trying to figure out why it's not like the bullets aren't coming out. And Dean even says, like, you really think I'd hand you a loaded pistol? Yeah. Like, I know what's going on. Yeah. Not fucking dumb. And this is why we love Dean. This is why we're on Team Dean, not Team Sam. So, he, Dean starts to look around the surgery room, and you see Ellicott walk by because Sam's been knocked out, so obviously Ellicott's not influencing him anymore right so he's looking around and he finds a cabinet with hair sticking out of the mm -hmm. side yeah it doesn't take dean very long to find where the no. body's at and all i can think is ill ill yeah that means there's a body yeah ill yeah Ew. no thanks and he opens the door and it's just the cabinet smell. yeah <laughs> all i can think of is like the equivalent to the smell that he probably smelled is is i want to think about it it's like when it. my mom bought half a cow, no, a whole cow, and somebody had unplugged the freezer. Oh my god! Yeah, somebody at our house had un like either rancid it died, meat. Yeah, and it's just rancid meat smell. Ugh. There were maggots and like big ass black flies and oh my everything god. by the That's time, and awful. we had to clean it out, and I had to get inside the freezer to like wipe it out because I was small enough to get in there and oh, do it. Oh no, thank you. It was gross, but that's what I equate to like what he's smelling. I feel you, yeah. bro. That's no, thank gross. You. But yeah, he doesn't. It doesn't take him long to find where the body's at in the cupboard or in the cabinet or whatever. And he just like goes to work. He grabs yeah. his his salt. salt and he salts the bones and then he douses it with lighter fluid. And just as he's about to like light him on fire, Doctor Ellicott comes up and he's like, grabs him by the face. I'm going to I'm help make you. you all better. Yeah. No, no, you won't. And as he's got Dean by the face like he did with Sam, Dean lights his lighter and throws it over to the body. Yeah. Because he's got a Zippo lighter. Yeah. Those things are fucking bomb. Yeah. They light like when it's super windy outside, when it's wet outside. And they stay lit. And they That's stay the best. Lit. So he like lights it, tosses the, the lighter onto the bones and nails it. Like hits it right just right perfect. Yeah. And Dr. Ellicott like turns to stone. Yeah. Like, he, it, it, he doesn't burn up like the Hookman did. Doesn't burn up like the Hookman. Doesn't burn up like, um, doesn't melt like the Lady in White. Yeah, she turned into a puddle. Yeah, there. I mean, I don't understand why he... Bloody Mary turned into glass and shattered. Yeah. I don't know why he turned to stone. I don't either. I don't know what the significance is. Yeah, it was it was weird. So, anyways, he turns to stone like... And just breaks apart. It falls down and, like, busts into a million little dusty pieces. Yeah. And it's about that time that Sam wakes up. <laughs> Gene says, You're not going to try and kill me, are you? No. Good. That would be awkward. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not all super ragey and pissed off anymore. Yeah. And then you f daylight breaks, of course. Mm-hmm. And the kids are like, thanks for saving our lives. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> and they leave. Sam And Sam apologizes for all the aggro shit that he was saying down in the basement. And Dean's like, oh, you remember that, huh? Well, yeah. 
I guess chalk that up for you being an asshole, and he just kind of brushes it under the rug. Yeah, but I feel like he doesn't really brush it under the rug. I feel like it's he's pretending like it's not a big deal, and it is what it is, but mm-hmm. he holds on to it. Because I know that in a, in a future episode, he brings it all up. Well, yeah. I mean, it's got a... It, Passive-aggressive girl move. It's going to affect Dean. him whether... Whether they, you know, whether he wants it to or not, it's going to affect him. Yeah. And But, yeah, that's super passive-aggressive girl move. Like, it's fine, and then bring it up months later. Yeah. Do you remember that one time? You, you've been feeling like this forever. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> Dean says he's just tired and he wants to go to bed. Well, yeah, so they go back to a hotel, and they're sleeping it off, and Dean's phone starts to ring again, and Sam keeps trying to wake him up to answer the yeah. phone, but Dean's not waking up. Dean, your phone. In your phone. That's like me in the morning when my husband's alarm goes off. I'm like, honey, honey, that's you. Oh my god, I do that's the yours. same thing with Greg because his <laughs> alarms start going off at 6:45 and he doesn't fucking move. So I do like the poke. Oh, the poke, and then I like shove him. Wake up. That well, ours start around like four. Well, yeah, he wakes up much earlier than Greg does. <sighs> so I get and it. Dan so Dan does like the sit in bed because he answers the phone. Yeah, he like, answers the phone. He's all hello, all groggy, and then. He like does the straight shoot up in yeah. bed and says, "Dad,", Dad? and then that's the end. that's the end of it. It doesn't end in any way, shape, or form showing baby's ass. Nope, it doesn't. So, and that concludes the episode for today. That is our first double digit episode. Yeah, yay for us! We did it. We're still doing it. I don't know if people are still listening, but we're still recording. We're still recording. <laughs> Hopefully more people pick up and start listening soon. Yes. So if they wanted to send us a question, Tasha, where would they send it to us at? They could uh, send it to us on the Twitter at underscore get the salt. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a Facebook page. It is get the salt, a supernatural podcast, or they can email us at... They, you guys can email us at podcastgetthesalt at gmail.com. You can email me directly at haleygetthesalt at gmail.com. Or you can find me on Twitter at getthesalthaley. You can also find me on Twitter at getthesalttasha. Yeah. And that's it. I don't have a special email like Haley does. So. <laughs> well, it's fine. <laughs> but, yeah, if you guys have any questions, if you have any anything that you want us to – like mention in one of the episodes that you think is super important um we will try and stay up on our email and everything as much as we can and we can do a special little questionnaire um recording and put that in before an episode or we can just give you a shout out on our next recording yeah so we'll see you next time